good day everyone welcome back today i'm going to start off um, having a look at s p 500 and you might think why am i looking at s p 500 if we're here talking about talking about um ict concept in crypto well to understand crypto and particularly bitcoin you have to understand a lot about what's happened in the stock market okay because they are correlated pairs what do you mean by correlated pairs okay well there's a phenomenon in, uh, in the markets where certain assets move in sympathy to one another. In this case, we have a situation where Bitcoin often moves in sympathy to the major stock indices. Okay, and, the, and the stock indices move in correlation to one another. So there's a sort of roll-on effect where certain differences or divergences in the stock indices have a ripple effect over onto Bitcoin. And I'll show you what I mean. So there's two areas that I want you to focus on. The first one being this higher high set in here. Okay, that's going to be important for the intermarket relationship between NASDAQ and S&P. Then I want you to have a look at this higher high put in here. This is going to be important for its relationship and deviation from that same price action in Bitcoin. Okay, so we create a lower low. Oops, sorry, we create a higher low here, in the S&P, while at the same time let the Nasdaq run sell side liquidity. Okay, when this happens, we generally set up. We generally can start viewing the S&P as the relative strength leader, and it gives us further impetus in thinking that price is likely to move higher. Price wants to move higher as it's failing to take lows. Okay. And it gives us targets for bar side liquidity before a potential due to swing and the market changes direction, which is falls in line with um, the optimal trade anti-pattern recognition uh, present within the London, within the New York kill zone. So in this case, this is what um, happens. Price breaks up just before a hop past nine, taking out a swing high and the previous day's high. And we reach the first standard deviation of Asia range. Okay, this is something I'll get a bit uh, into later. So we have all this confluence and uh, as a result, we break down and the real trend continues into the morning and into the afternoon. This is one example of SMT divergence, where you have two correlated pairs, the SMP and the NASDAQ. In the, on the NASDAQ, you create a lower low, and the SMP creates a higher high. In this case, it is a bullish setup. And also in this case, it gives us further confluence to our idea that price is likely to take bar side liquidity first before running lower. Because you must remember that what is the time during when all of this is happening? The time is hot past, hot past eight. Price is above New York open. When I see this, I expect price to take bar side liquidity first as part of the manipulation. Okay, and because we have SMT's divergence, right, we can, we we have further reason to think that price is likely short-term bullish and wants to run for higher highs, in which case it does. Okay, and it takes out a swing high and takes out a previous day high and it reaches the first standard deviation of Asia range. Okay, before um, spooling further down, and distributing uh, lower. Price is failing to move in sympathy with the stock indices. So instead of putting in a higher high like is happening in the S&P and the NASDAQ, Bitcoin is making lower lows, uh, lower highs. So this is hidden bearish divergence. So think about it like this. Bitcoin is your price. The S&P is your oscillator. When price is making lower highs and your oscillator is making higher highs, it's hidden bearish divergence. And it is a 
indicator that price is likely to reverse. Okay, and that's exactly what happens. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to talk about is Asia range and the idea of standard deviation of the Asian range. So this theory states that the high and the low put in at Asian range, which is eight o'clock to midnight. If we take that high and low and we extend a one-to-one -one extension of that move and we move it three times higher and three times lower, like this, um, we can use those, those extensions as potential targets for daily highs and daily lows. So in this case, Monday, the first one-to-one -one extension lower of the Asia range gives us a target for that day's low. If we move over to the S&P, the first one-to-one -one extension above the Asia range gives us a target for that day's high. Okay, and the second one-to-one -one extension for Asia range lower gives us the target for that day's low. It's a very powerful tool and something that you should always be considering when um, uh, mapping out or charting points of interest. Okay, so but you can't trade this alone. You should always have some other high time high time frame levels that are um, giving you further confluence. So in this case, we have a previous day high and a one to one extension. On Bitcoin, we have a one to one extension coming in below um, at some bar side liquidity. The last thing I want to do today is I want to go through price action going back from Friday. I want to point out the interesting thing that happened where we ran significant pools of liquidity and why we may be selling off onto Monday and Tuesday. Okay, so I'm going to start you on Friday. I'm going to have a naked chart in front of us. Um, I've just delineated the new candle days. This is not midnight time, it's just new candle days. I'm just going to use some traditional um, charting methods and ICT concepts like the fair value gap and ranges to give us a little bit of narrative and maybe help you guys um, understand my process and my thinking, how I backtest these things and how I um, just reinforce them in my mind. Okay, so the first thing that we have here on the chart is the three drafts pattern playing out. Now, the three drafts pattern is a, is a pattern that ICT talks about and teaches a lot about because it is, um, it is a good reversal pattern. And um, the theory being that each move higher is another run on buy side liquidity. Okay, when we see a three drafts pattern, we don't expect price to um, to essentially run high for buy side liquidity or do a like a swing failure pattern, because as we're continuously moving up, we are um, taking out pools of liquidity before we've exhausted the pools of liquidity available and price moves down into a premium, to a discount, and we load up. Uh, oftentimes, we, this is not a reversal pattern. Don't get me wrong, it's not a reversal. It's oftentimes just, um, uh, you're gonna see a pullback, okay? And where do we pull back into? Well, we pull back into a discount before we move up to um, accumulate more long positions. So we have the three drafts pattern playing out. And we should just knock out Right, so we just remember uh, three days back, one, two, three. So let's mark out this high. So this is a this is a high. This was the buy side liquidity that remained intact as we were moving up. Three drafts patterns didn't quite feel the need. Price didn't quite feel the need at the time to run this buy side liquidity. So this was um, this was the the liquidity in the market that was um, more likely to be tagged, right? Because price has been bullish 
and um, because price is bullish, price is more inclined to go up, therefore the easiest liquidity is above us. So now an interesting thing about Sunday is that you often have, at least in Bitcoin, you have um, a period after about seven o'clock ranging to let's say six o'clock in the evening where price is quite choppy and it often has this it often runs for some sort of liquidity on sunday now i what i like to do is i like to see what liquidity is it running for now if it runs for buy side liquidity and closes below the midnight opening i consider this quite um quite bearish and I expect a further sell-off into Monday, Tuesday, and even into Wednesday, okay? So have a look what happens here. Just on about seven o'clock, we start with this choppy uh, volatile price action. Price runs above, I think it's Tuesday's high. This was Tuesday's high. Tags this last bastion of our side liquidity before pulling back, okay? So just as we see this, always have a look on Sunday. What's price doing? Is it reaching for buy side liquidity or sell side liquidity? And it's normally going to actually set up the narrative for the rest of the week. So definitely something um, people should have a look into. And have a look at the, the statistics related to volatility. You'll see Sundays are volatile days, but only after 7 o'clock. Like for instance, at midnight to 7 the statistics show that we have um, a low volatility on a Sunday. Okay, so um, here's that, you know, this is how it plays out here. So, <clears throat> price breaks down. What is it, what is it, what is it doing as it's breaking down? Okay, it's leaving intact this, this imbalance, which is, um, which is a fair value gap, right? So it leaves intact this fair value gap. And um, London session, kill zone, we tag that imbalance and continue to make our way down, targeting the south side liquidity there. And um, I was having a look at, so if you have a look at this fair value gap. So initially price came off of this fair value gap, attempted to go a little bit higher, ran the liquidity again, attempted to go a little bit higher, but um, essentially failed. Now, another interesting thing to note is if you notice how price fails to break the SIR. So this is something that um, ICT calls the, sorry, it's called a breakaway gap. Okay, so essentially, um, this gap will remain open until um, uh, uh, other low-level object objectives are fulfilled and, and booked. So in this case, what was the low-level objective that needed to be um, tagged? Well, it was this engineering of south side above uh, above these lows. All right, so, so price, because you would expect this imbalance to be corrected, right? It makes sense. There's probably single prints in there. Um, the probability is that price wants to um, rebalance that. The market wants to rebalance that, offer it um, to both sides of the market fairly efficiently. Um, that's an absolute reasonable assumption, uh, but you don't see that happening, right? It's because this is this is a breakaway gap. We still expect the, it to be uh, filled, but we just don't know how long it's going to take. All we know is that, okay, hold on, maybe price is actually looking for a lower objective first. Okay, in this case, what that's what happens. We run further south side before making our way up and eventually um, closing this gap. Okay, and then we run down, as we're explaining about the SMT divergence here, price breaks down. And for me now, we had an interesting place. Yes, we do, we do have another breakaway gap potentially, as we see price refusing to go above a certain level. So we've got to think to ourselves, is price looking to fulfill lower objectives? What would be the lower objective in this case? Well, 
what do we have below here? Below here is equalize and fair value gap, an imbalance. It's a very reasonable to think that we that we run down into these lows, into this um, uh, bar side liquidity, sell side liquidity. Perhaps then if we um, get the correct reaction, oh, uh, we can we can see some higher prices. Cool, so that's sort of what I'm thinking. Or we can, uh, I'm thinking we can rebalance this gap. Um, it's just a matter of how long it'll take and are we gonna first um, book lower, uh, taking some lower objectives. All right, so that was pretty quick, um, simple stuff. Look guys, higher term, um, long term high, you know the long term high is um, created after a significant high time frame level is breached. Uh, intermediate term high, created a rebalance, and a short term high. Okay, so, yep, we might be into reversal here on uh, Thursday, but we'll see. Anyway, I hope everyone has a, a great rest of the week, and uh, bye.